Well, welcome back to the Launchpad. My name's Zach. I'm the host here. Here at the Launchpad, we cover everything space, space flight, space engineering, and the future of space, and we're so excited to have you here with us tonight. Before we begin, make sure you've smashed that subscribe button so you never miss a new update or live broadcast, and hit the like button. It really does help this video reach more people on YouTube, and we're so excited for what 2021 is already shaping up to be. Due to some technical difficulties, we did miss last week's episode, so strap in, because here is everything that happened in the last two weeks in spaceflight. On January 14th, we saw another test from the Blue Origin team of their new Shepard rocket. The mission titled NS-14 featured a crew capsule outfitted with new upgrades specifically for the future astronaut experience, including six window seats, Speakers in the cabin with microphones and push-to-talk buttons at each seat so the astronauts in the future can talk continuously with mission control. We saw the first crew alert system with a panel at each seat relaying important safety messages to passengers. The cabin walls were cushioned linings and sound suppression devices were installed to reduce ambient noise inside the capsule. And the environmental systems, including the cooling system and humidity controls to regulate the temperature and prevent the capsule windows from fogging during flight, were all activated, as well as the carbon dioxide scrubbing. During the ascent, New Shepard rotated at a 2 to 3 degrees per second rotation, which gave, will give future passengers a 360 degree view during their trip to the edge of space. The flight lasted for 10 minutes and 10 seconds, reached a maximum velocity of 2,242 miles per hour, about 2,600 kilometers an hour, and reached an apogee of over 251,000 feet above mean sea level. We're still waiting to hear from Blue Origin on when the next launch will be and what the next milestones for New Shepard will look like. Then on January 17th, we saw Virgin Orbit written to the history books with their second launch and first successful orbit attempt with Launcher 1. Launcher 1 was attached to Cosmic Girl, Virgin Orbit's custom 747-400, and Cosmic Girl took off and flew to an altitude of about 35,000 feet before releasing Launcher 1. Launcher 1, just moments later, uh, ignited its rocket engines and pitched up towards orbit. On board were nine small satellites. This test was not broadcasted live, but we, we do have this video here that has shown us that there was a private live stream, and we're really hoping that in the future Virgin Orbit will release this stream to the public. Some really incredible data we see on screen here that we don't normally see from SpaceX or Rocket Lab. Then, on January 20th, we had a double header with Rocket Lab and SpaceX. Just as the clock rolled over into a new day in America, Rocket Lab launched their 18th Electron mission, Another One Leaves the Crust, from Launch Complex 1. This mission launched a single communication microsatellite for the OHB group that will enable specific frequencies to support future services from orbit. Later on that same day, we then saw SpaceX launch from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station with their 17th Starlink mission, launching more 60 more Starlink satellites into orbit. SpaceX has hit a huge milestone, now having launched more than 1,000 satellites, totaling 1,015 satellites, and currently has 951 still in orbit. The company program was available in Canada, U.S., and U.K. for beta, and now has been extended to a large number of countries, including Argentina, Australia, Austria, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, France, Germany, Greece, India, Ireland, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Netherlands, New Zealand, Philippines, South Africa, and Spain. As you can see on this video, this is what it looked like when there was just 600 Starlink satellites in orbit, and we are now approaching 1,000 operational satellites. So it'll be great to see what this uh, diagram looks like once it's updated here in the future. But as you can see, Starlink is really covering the globe, and service will soon be expanding pretty much globally, if not by the end of the year. Just a few days later, on January 24th, SpaceX launched their historical Transporter 1 mission. The four-time previously flown Falcon 9 carried 133 CubeSats, microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles, along with 10 Starlink satellites to orbit. Over the course of the 90 minutes orbit, the satellites were slowly deployed from the Falcon 9 second stage. The mission was a great success and is historical because it not only launched 35 more satellites more than any rocket in history, but it was also the first ever fully dedicated rideshare mission for SpaceX. The 10 Starlink satellites that were included in this launch were deployed into the first Starlink or polar orbit system, and this is what brought service to Alaska. 
Now let's take a closer look at the tests that took place this week because there's a bunch of them as well. On January 16th, NASA reached a major milestone in the testing of their new SLS program with the new center core green hot fire test. During the static fire test, we saw four previously used RS-25 engines, more commonly known as the Space Shuttle main engines. Now, sadly, this wasn't a perfect historical test, as only 67.7 seconds into the eight-minute static fire, a major component failure occurred. A few days later, NASA followed up and gave an update, stating the shutdown was due to a conservative parameter in the system due to being a ground test. Should this failure have happened in an actual flight, the rocket would have continued to have flown as it was not in immediate danger. We'll have to wait and see what's next for SLS, but I'm 100% sure we'll need to see another full static fire with the center core before NASA continues with their Artemis 1 mission. Now, NASA does say they're still targeting the Artemis 1 mission for the end of this year, and if you Google it, it even comes up on Google saying they're aiming for November. So we'll just have to wait and see, but hopefully SLS will take to the sky this year. And now on to the big one, Starship. First, I'd like to give a huge shout out to Brendan for continuing to release these incredible infographs on Twitter, showing the current status of all the Starship prototypes. We saw some big changes to this graphic as SN13 and 14 were removed as they will be getting skipped by SpaceX and SN15 is jumping ahead. We've seen some advancements with the first booster and now BN2 is now visible with the first parts being photographed. SN18 is also now under construction and SN10 is fully stacked and completed and ready to start testing. SN9 was moved out onto the pad and has gone through testing, engine swaps and more testing and is ready for its test flight. SpaceX set a record last week completing three static fires within three hours in very rapid succession. Following the rapid fire test, Elon did confirm that two of the engines needed to have some repairs and would be just swapped out. Just a few days later, not weeks, days later, we, with pretty much zero visibility due to the fog, SpaceX completed another static fire in the very early morning. But SpaceX wasn't just going to wait. So instead, they rolled out SN7.2, moved it to the pad, and just this morning, the first initial pressure tests were completed and were successful. Today, we also saw Tankzilla move back to the pad, and the rumors are flying that SN10 is going to be making her way to the pad in just the next couple of days. And lastly, this week, we had confirmation that SpaceX has acquired two formal, former oil rigs that will service as their first floating Starship spaceports. And that is it. Wow, what an incredible two weeks it has been. And we aren't even done January yet. There's still uh, launches scheduled for this month. And looking forward into February, there is a lot to, to take in. Now let's take a quick look at what we can expect to look forward to in the rest of January. We should see SN9 hopefully take to the sky in the next couple days in its 12.5 kilometer test flight. On January 30th, we have SpaceX launching another Starlink mission, and on the 31st, another one from the China Space Agency. So make sure you've subscribed to us here at the Launchpad to stay up to date on update, weekly updates on everything happening in the space flight industry, as well as for our live coverage of launch, landing, and testing. Now before we would wrap up, I'd like to take a moment and recognize two tragic accidents that took place this week in history. On January 27th, 1967, was the tragic Apollo 1 fire, killing all three on board, and it destroyed the command module. The name Apollo 1 was chosen by the crew, but was made official by NASA in the honor of the fire. And on January 28th, 1985, was the tragic launch of Space Shuttle Challenger on mission STS-51L. The space shuttle, just 73 seconds into launch, disintegrated and separated from the solid rocket boosters. All who were killed on board, either during this explosion and disintegration, or when the remains of the shuttle smashed into the ocean three minutes later. We'd like to take a moment and recognize those that have been lost in these two accidents and other accidents leading to where we are now in space flight. If it wasn't for their dedication and their sacrifice, who knows where we'd be today. So we want to say thank you to them. Well, that's been a long one. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a double week update of the Launchpad News. And this has been Zach with the Launchpad signing off.